Hi, this is Arthur F. Karmazi, and welcome to Asia's Most Asked Leadership Questions. Today's question is, what are the three characteristics of great leaders? So, without further ado, let's see what they are. The first characteristic is certainly the most obvious, but also one of the most difficult. And for some reason, leaders, even though they know it, they don't do it. It is being consistent with what you say and what you do. That means that if you say you are going to do something, make sure you do it. Make sure that you follow through. And if for some reason something happens, well also make sure that you communicate properly why it's not happening. Communicate with those people to try to come up with a new solution that is going to solve the problem in the same way. And of course, if you're going to give consequences to something, make sure that people understand those consequences and make sure that you follow through. So if they do do something that is not in line with what you are saying, say, okay, if you do X, you're going to get Y. Well, make sure that they do get Y, okay? Whether it's positive or negative. The need for this is to develop trust. Without trust, people basically just don't respect you as a leader, okay? And you can still have consequences and provide a, an element of trust and caring. Why? Because people will listen to you. They acknowledge that, hey, okay, this guy actually will follow through with what he says, positive or negative. Consistency is essential. Be the person that you say you are. Do the things that you say you're going to do. Leadership characteristic number two, reduce the risk for excellence. Create an environment where people can feel significant, where people who can bring out their innate desire to be the best that they can be. If you remember when you first started working, do you remember how excited you were, how you knew you could really be excellent in this job? What happened? Okay, eventually fear started to come in. And it doesn't matter whether you're at the very low part of the organization, whether you're working on minimum wage or whether you're the CEO, it's the same kind of thing. The fear of looking stupid, the fear of making a mistake, the fear of doing something that other people are not going to approve of is what prevents you from being your absolute best. So depending on how you organize, how you create that environment, are you going to be creating fear? Are you going to be blaming people? Because if you're blaming people, you know what happens? You are basically saying, I am a victim and I failed because of this person, because of this person, because of this reason, because of this reason, rather than focusing on the objective. See, if you focus on the end result, if all of the processes to get to that end result can be done differently, are accepted. Hey, you know what? We tried this way. We tried this way. Hey, dude, what did you come up with? Is that a great idea? Or is it like, no, it has to be done this way. And if you don't do it exactly this way, well, then you're going to get screwed. Okay. That doesn't help people to develop their abilities. What fear does is it keeps people at the minimum level of expectation. Now, if you're, if that's okay with you, then Fear is acceptable. But if you really want to take the time to nurture your people, if you really want to take the time to develop your people into more competent, more loyal, more motivated, more dedicated, creative individuals that can come up with solutions to your problems that you never even thought of, you're going to have to trust them. You're going to have to trust that in the end, your people do want to be excellent. You're going to have to trust that fear, the creation of fear in your organization is limiting them and you want to create a risk-free environment, which also means communication. It means that you've got to get your people to trust that what they say to you is not going to get you to react to them and make them feel small. That if they make a mistake, you're not going to blame them and basically say, it's your fault. Because you know what? Blaming never solves the problem. What it does is it basically severs relationships and severs trust. Focusing on the objective solves the problem. Okay, you made a mistake. Now, what can we do about it? Let's move forward. Okay, what did you learn from the mistake? How can we create excellence together? How am I doing as a leader? How 
here's what I think about you. Are you okay with me ex being candid with what I see? And if I'm wrong, please tell me. Create the open communication. Create that trust. Create the opportunity for people to tell you what they feel, what they think, what they see. And you will develop people who will do anything for you. Who people who are going to work at their absolute best level and they well they may make mistakes on the way these people are the ones that are going to be the most competent after a short period of time so now the next one is leadership characteristic number three the alignment between your senior team and your organization's brand see you and your senior team are setting the example for the entire organization you are setting the direction. If you're always fighting, if you're always disagreeing, well, you know what? That doesn't look good to everyone else. They don't see you as congruent. And even worse, if your people, your senior team, and you are not aligned with what your organization really represents, okay, well, then people aren't gonna really believe in what they're doing. See, what are you really selling? If you're selling pipes, are you just selling pipes? Or are you selling the ability to transport water and fuel and energy to all parts of the world so that people can live better lives? If you're selling toys, are you just selling toys? Or are you selling the opportunity for children around the world to be educated and entertained? What do you really sell? And do you and your senior team really believe it? Are you focusing on the objective of creating that in your organization and around the world to all of your customers if you believe it if you day by day live your brand if you cooperate and focus on the objective with your senior team you will be setting an example for the rest of your organization if you don't they're gonna see you as incongruent they're gonna say well if this person doesn't do it if the leader doesn't do it well then what can I do? If you do have this alignment and you express it and communicate it to your people on a regular basis, if you tell them what they are really doing, are they just employees or are they part of this greater purpose, this greater idea of what your organization is representing? If they feel like their job is important because it is part of a greater event, of a greater result, whatever it is that your company end result is for your products or services, then they're gonna feel like they're doing something great. Doesn't matter what job they have, they are a part of something great. Set the example so that people don't just have jobs, so that people have missions in their life and they are achieving those missions through your organization, through your brand, and through the guidance of you and your senior team. So that's it for the three characteristics of great leaders. Stay tuned next time when we ask the question, what do I do with a problem employee? Until then, this is Arthur F. Karmazi wishing you great success. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, visit leadershipfaq.com. That's leadershipfaq.com. Sign up and you get all of Asia's most asked leadership questions. And if you happen to have a burning question about leadership, email me personally at AFC at Karmazi.net. This is Arthur F. Karmazi wishing you great success.